Dinosaurs may be the most famous prehistoric animals, but they're far from the only amazing creatures in Earth's past. Today, we're going to talk about 10 prehistoric invertebrates that would give dinosaurs nightmares, diving into some of our favorite creepy crawlies from the fossil record. I'm the Vivid N, and I use the power of my biology degree to specialize in paleontology. To help make this particular video even better, I brought in the best invertebrate specialist I know. My dad! You're my dad! Boogie woogie woogie! woogie, woogie. And that's me, Russ of Aquarium X Pets. I make videos about creatures you can keep in an aquarium or vivarium with a special emphasis on invertebrates. Let's, Let's get, get started. started. Let's start with an ancient insect that has an absolutely fantastic name, Giga Titan. Giga means giant, and Titan can refer to the primordial precursors to the gods of Greek mythology, but is also often used to mean giant. So, this insect's name means giant giant. The genus was discovered in what is now Kyrgyzstan, where it occurred in the middle to late Triassic period, about 230 to 220 million years ago. Although some might mistake this insect for a very large lacewing, or even a gargantuan grasshopper, it is a member of the now extinct order Titanoptera. In many respects, it resembles predatory katydids or mantises, something like that, because of its raptorial forelegs which are a very effective means of capturing prey, but it evolved them completely independently from these other insect lineages. These were massive. They had a wingspan of up to about 16 inches, or about 40.6 centimeters. Paleoisopus is up next. Its name means ancient isopod or ancient same foot, but the name is tricky since Paleoisopus isn't very closely related to isopods at all. It is certainly ancient, however. Paleoisopus lived in Devonian Germany, which makes it about 400 million years old. Despite the name, Paleoisopus was actually a huge pycnogonid, or sea spider. It was described a century ago as an isopod, but re-identified several years later, and x-rays of the material have allowed us to understand its biology in greater detail. It would have used powerful grasping appendages on its face called chelophores to capture and crush its prey, which they'd suck dry using their proboscis. Its long legs ended in sharp claws, perfect for grasping rocks or sections of the seafloor while it was on the hunt. Its leg span was 40 centimeters or 16 inches across, putting it in the same category as many modern giant sea spiders. Out of the 1,300 species alive today, most are not as large as Paleoisopus, but the very biggest living sea spiders have a leg span up to 70 centimeters or 27.5 inches. I wonder if we had the same sample size of extinct sea spiders, we'd find even bigger ones. Next on our list is Chronocaron a tailless whip scorpion, or amblypigid. No, I didn't say Taylor Swift scorpion, but let me know down in the comments if that's what you heard. Many thanks to XS West for creating the art specifically for this video. The name for this creature is composed of Kronos, a Greek titan with a scythe as a weapon, and Charon, a god who conducted souls to the underworld. I'm just guessing here, but the name may be a reference to these scythe-like raptorial pedipalps, and how they swiftly conducted many an arthropod out of this life. I don't recall finding any extremely specific timeline data for this species, but um, mid-Cretaceous, so maybe about 110 million to 80 million years ago, is a rough figure. This species was discovered in present-day Myanmar. According to Engel and Grimaldi, 2014, the total body length of the holotype was 6.7 millimeters, not including legs or pedipalps, so including those appendages, it was probably less than half the size of this guy, which is a fairly close living relative within the ancient clade of amblypigids. It's clear that the basic body type has not changed much. Two really interesting features of this taxon are these raptorial pedipalps and these long whip-like antenniform legs. Number four is Dinocroton draculi. This name kind of gives it away. Dracula's terrible tick is pretty descriptive after all. Dinocroton lived in what is now Myanmar during the Cenomanian stage of the Cretaceous period, roughly the same time period as the Megatheropod Spinosaurus, but on a different continent. This 99 million year old arthropod has been found in amber with dinosaur feathers, indicating that it likely specialized in Cretaceous feathered dinosaurs. That may have included birds. While far from the largest or most visually intimidating animal on this list, Dinocroton is the most likely to actually give dinosaurs nightmares since it was a parasite that specialized in sucking their blood. It raises the question of what diseases Dinocroton could have been a vector organism for that may have affected dinosaurs, since their archosaurian immune systems are so different from mammals. To paraphrase the famous superhero The Tick, 
It's a secret message from my blood. This is a decently large millipede. And there are much bigger extant millipedes, but they're all dwarfed by arthropleura. Let's talk about the meaning of the name. Arthro means joint and pleura means rib. And as you look at the specimen, you can kind of figure out where that comes from. These amazingly large diplopods were around from about 344 million years ago to about 292 million years ago during the Carboniferous and Permian periods. It's one of the contenders for the largest arthropods ever at about 2.6 meters or 8.5 feet long. Number six is one of the most wild animals that's ever existed on planet Earth. Although I wouldn't blame you for mistaking it for something out of a sci-fi movie. Omnidens amplis means giant all tooth, which sounds like a monster from Norse mythology. Any guesses as to what it might look like? It was likely a lobopodian that lived in Cambrian, China, and is only known from preserved mouth parts and frontal appendages. Based on more complete relatives, it would have been over a meter and a half long, or as long as a person. It seems like an animal that would be more at home in Arrakis than on Earth. Listen, I gave! I can't wait to tell you about my new favorite benthic behemoth, Falciscaris, which means scythe shrimp. This grim creature lived in the Ordovician from about 486 million to about 443 million years ago. This amazing arthropod was scarier than any true shrimp, as it likely used its scythe-like appendages to harvest other benthic organisms. With size estimates of about 28 to 48 inches long, or about 71 to 121 centimeters long, it could likely take down some pretty large prey. Number eight is a staple of my childhood. The name Brontoscorpio might tell you quite a bit about the animal if you're familiar with scientific names. Thunder Scorpion is a great title for a paradox Pokemon. Electric poison type, maybe? As you likely inferred, this three-foot-long scorpion was a powerful predator in the Devonian period of England. At least we think it's a scorpion, given how we only have a single incomplete pedipalp to reconstruct it from. It's been suggested to be an enormous crustacean instead, which would be just as terrifying. I still remember how devastated I was watching Walking with Monsters as a kid when the Cephalaspis migration got butchered by an army of Brontoscorpia, but hey, you've got to eat. And now let's talk about Jekyll Terrace. Jekyll is from the name of a German paleontologist, and Terrace means, of course, wing. Not surprisingly, I looked up a photo of Otto Jekyll, the paleontologist, and he didn't appear to have any wings. This Eurypterid lived in the Devonian from about 410 to 402 million years ago. Eurypterids are often called sea scorpions, but Jekyllotaris would be more accurately called a not sea, not scorpion, as it was likely a freshwater organism that is not closely related to scorpions at all. This creature sizes up at about 7.5 to 8.5 feet long, making it another contender for the largest arthropod ever. Number 10 isn't only the biggest animal on our list, it's also the heaviest invertebrate known from the history of planet Earth. Parapazosia means snail axis in Serbian, which makes sense when you realize that it refers to the biggest ammonoid ever discovered. It lived for about 30 million years in the late Cretaceous and have been found in Europe, Africa, and North America, making them a highly successful genus. Large Parapazosia individuals could have shell diameters of 2 meters, or 6.6 .6 feet, and weigh over 1,400 kilograms, or in excess of 3,000 pounds. Their tentacles would have been used to capture prey in open water snatching up fish and small marine reptiles and crunching them to bits with their large beaks. This gigantic hero in a whole shell was the sumo wrestler cephalopod of the Cretaceous. Thank, Thank you, you for, for watching. watching! Please check out Aquarimax Pets for more fascinating invertebrate information. And head over to Vividen Paleontology Evolved to learn more about prehistoric life. We'll, we'll see, see you next time. time.